welcome everyone. It is the last day of our pet summit, our human animal connection summit, and it's just been a joy to be with you. I'm Dr. Sue Wagner, and, and I first want to start with thanking all of our speakers. I hope you enjoyed them as much as, as I did. And to, you know, invite you to follow what they're doing. Um, it's really about bringing things to you that that spoke to me and people to you that that I valued um, for you and for your your animal family. And there may have been one or two or all of them that that really resonated with you that you found very interesting. So, you know, oftentimes after these summits, it, it's easy to just kind of get back in the routine and forget about some of these things we've learned. So I'm just inviting you to 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 find one or two and and keep keep doing it and and I thought it was an interesting theme that that both that all of Renee and Dr. Sivilla and then Nick all talked about how the importance of breathing in their own individual ways and that was just a great reminder to me of yes don't don't forget my breathing practices don't forget when my mind is going. 50 miles an hour and I'm thinking of this and this to to um, catch myself as Dr. Sivilla said just it's okay that that happens just catch ourselves and come back to our breath and uh, I so I hope with with the breath work and the hand things that Renee Hawley taught us and the sounds that you'll have something to take forward and and look for um, those folks that resonated with you. And um, and so now's about some some questions for the day. And and um, I just wanted to make a mention that that I know Facebook gets like I'm not really a techie. You know, I had to have my niece teach me how to text many years ago. Um, so just watch for the live, what we're doing now, the live Q&A, and then with your question or comment, doesn't have to be a question or comment, whatever you want to share, just make it sure it's in the comment that is associated right under the live Q&A, because if it gets embedded deeper into Facebook someplace else, um, the producer can't, can't find it to bring it forward for us to talk about. So uh, feel free, to, again, questions, comments, sharing, what did you like about today or any of the days? Um, I, you know, I loved Nick's sound bath. And as I said in introducing him, if, if you haven't seen it yet, I think you're going to enjoy it. Um, as I said, you know, this may um, create an interest for you. There may be somebody in your area that you can go and experience that in person because it's wonderful from the sound aspect, but it's also amazing from feeling it. And that's one of the things that we're going to talk about in the, the post program that will be April 29th. And and I'll be talking about energy medicine and the science of that and giving you some energy tips for yourself and your animals and and sound therapy and go, you know, Nick did a great intro there, just like, well, we set it up perfectly and we're going to go deeper into that science of how sound works and some really cool new stuff that's out there and I'll, I'll teach you some things with tuning forks and and then music therapy and we'll go deeper into the science of that and how it affects the nervous system and and different types of music that that can be helpful for yourself and for your animal companions so if you're somebody that really likes that how does this work kind of thing then i think you'll you'll love the post program plus it will give you something like like these last few days have, I hope that you can take and use right away. You know, it's it's fun to learn things, but but we also have to have something be relevant for our lives. So I hope you'll you'll look forward to that. And I'm just waiting to see if there's any comments or questions yet. We don't have anything yet. So um, there was one yesterday about the Conscious Animal Lovers movement, and that was 
the, if you remember day one with Dr. Alan Schoen. So I did check in with him because they were having um, trouble finding it. There was a link that wasn't working. So um, he did look into it and said they've got the information working. And I will try to remember tonight to actually type it in there, but it's under newearthvet.com, I believe, forward slash. And then it's the Conscious Animal Lovers Movement. But I'll, I'll type it in there later tonight. But um, thank you for that because they were working hard on getting that going. So whether it's something you want, I think you would enjoy following that. Again, Dr. Feynman and Holistic Actions and the group that he has and Dr. Edward and the wonderful work that he does with his community and his version of energy and body work healing is is just phenomenal and and as always you know i'm i'm always following what carol commentor is doing with healing touch for animals because um, i am a practitioner of that and I, I love and love that and i want to get deeper into what dr edward's doing too because i think that looks just so fascinating um and and following, you know, Neil and what he's doing. He has a whole tribe and he does, as he mentioned today, his full moon um, sessions. So you can tune into those. So that's pretty neat. And and again, a thanks to Dr. Sivilla because he's so busy and to take that time to explain mindfulness to us and show us all those breathing techniques and the oxygen advantage was the one that I, I hadn't heard of. And so that was really fascinating to me. And I thought, well, that's one I, I need to learn. I think that would be helpful to me. So um, so hopefully that was all very good. And I know we got some great comments about Renee Hollies and how it is helpful to just understand grief to the point degree that she helped us to understand. And so um, that's always a good reminder. So let's see. So far, no questions. Well, I think that might be a good thing. Everybody feels pretty good about what's happening and everything they've seen. And, um, you know, I was joking with somebody earlier that after I watched Nick's, I, I had a bunch of work to do. And I just was like, I think I want to just go take a rest. <laughs> so I think I'll watch them again tonight before I go to bed. Um, let's see. Okay. Hannah says, thank you for the summit. You are welcome. And thank you for just joining us. Day one, I mentioned in the live session, a pulse electromagnetic magnetic loop for stomatitis and bladder. Yes. Um, and it is from the Assisi company. And they started out with the the CC loop for people. And then they went to a CC loop for animals. It was just one loop and they have refined that they have mats, they have a loop that's good for calming. And now they have launched one that is designed for the stomatitis. I don't see any reason why it can't also be used on the bladder area. So not like you'd have to buy two loops or you buy the regular animal loop, small animal one and use it there in the in the um, mouth. But if you go to their website or ask your veterinarian to go over it and talk to you about it, um, it I, I have not personally used it for the stomatitis. However, I have used it for other things and have been really helpful. Uh, it's been really helpful as far as pain and that type of thing. So good luck with that. I hope, I hope it helps. Okay, how about the next one? You're coming in now. Okay, Laura, a friend's goat delivered three baby goats this afternoon. Oh, I love goats. One did not survive. Difficult birth. Oh, putting lavender essential oil on cotton balls in the pen help. Yes, yes. You know, um, yeah, farm animals love essential oils. And, and lavender, as we talked about, is so incredibly safe. So you could put it on cotton balls. You could put it on the mother. I'd have apps. If it's a high quality, pure lavender, I have no problem with that. And um, one that is really good for 
this type of situation in terms of oxytocin, you know, the hormone that, that's needed um, for birth and um, nursing and all that is clary sage. And some of the pure clary sages are really potent. So this might be one that would be better on a cotton ball and near, um, but that would be one that I would use and um, trying to think other ones more for the grief of it and just really acknowledging it, you know, from that heart centered to the mother. And, and I know people who are very science brained are going to go, what is she crazy? And no, I'm not. So it's just really sending that, that mother goat, like, okay, we got, we understand and we're here for you and we're sending all this good love into the other, the, the, baby goats, the kids. So um, yeah, definitely lavender. You might consider clary sage and you know anything else that's calming, chamomile. Um, I think those those are the big ones. So we'll wish wish all that well. So okay, how about the next one? Okay. All right. How to treat naturally treat sebaceous cysts. Oh, those doggone sebaceous cysts and dogs who don't have healthy skin turnover, which cause clogged glands and scabs. Normally one uses chemical shampoos with sulfur and salicylic. Yeah. You know, and some of the breeds, you know, it seems like the doodles get these sebaceous cysts and man, they can get so big. Um, so I, oh, and I'm trying to remember the name. There was, and there might be somebody on the Pet Summit Facebook group or the Pet Summit group, but I remember I was part of a summit last year and the sponsor was a wonderful essential oil shampoo company for animals. And I was just so impressed with their products. You know, I looked into them because um, I thought, oh, this looks really interesting. And they were so high quality and wonderful. So if there's somebody on the Pet Summit side that can throw that in the Facebook group. Um, but that's kind of what I would look for, a high quality shampoo with, with essential oils to help, you know, um, like oils that would be a little bit of an astringent, you know, like a eucalyptus or something along those lines, along with a calming, like a lavender things like that. And so to help keep the clogs, but some of it truly is like the genetics of it. Um, so, so once they start, you know, it's often if you can get them to open up, that's great and put some lavender frankincense is another one that I would mix together and put on it to help calm the inflammation, um, especially if they're starting to get inflamed. So lavender frankincense is just a fantastic combo to put right on there. Um, but on a routine, a good essential oil shampoo. Um, so hopefully we'll get that info on what that company was because it looked really, really good. Okay, let's see what else. The next one. Okay. Oh, great. And Laura says she has those oils. Good. Good. And those are the oils that I use, Laura. I like them too. I use, I use a lot, but that's, that's where I cut my teeth. So, um, oh, and there's one from Gail about signing up for the summit, but never got notice in my email. Oh dear. I only get your questions and answers live on Facebook. Well, hopefully, um, somebody is seeing that from the pet summit side, um, and can, look into that. So I'm glad you're on Facebook with that. And besides in the live Q&A, maybe post it someplace else as well, or email the Pet Summits folks and see. Um, so I'm sorry about that. So hopefully we can get you recordings or if it's going to be replayed, that that would be helpful. So let's see if there's anything else, nothing else just yet. Um, trying to think since we were we're talking about essential oils any other tips um that we that i didn't really mention in the lecture um you know a lot of times too it's it what it's sort of depending on your your brand that you like i think i mentioned this today um, but a lot of it's 
you know, really about what resonates with you. You want to make sure it's very pure, very therapeutic, but there are some um, oils that are just like, oh, I love that. And others are like, yeah, that's nice. So, so always trust, like I said before, whether it's a book or an oil or a supplement, always trust that, that interest that comes through your intuition. It's like, wow, that sounds really cool. And that's usually a sign to kind of look into that. Okay. I'm seeing one. My cat laid on a pat, heating pad all night, several uh, days for years. I learned about EMF radiation, removed the heating pad all oh. Um, a couple days later, she got a red horse throat that persisted three months. Could there be a connection? Um, it, it's kind of weird that when she came off of it, that she had the problem rather than when she was on it, especially since she had been on it for years. You know, I would have thought if, if she was having, if she hasn't a sensitivity that that would have shown up earlier on, you know, because a lot of people do have uh, sensitivities, whether it's to cell phones or 5Gs or um, whatever it is. So I'm inclined to say no, because again, she was on it for so many years and then came off of it and then had this hoarse throat. And um, I'm hoping that went away and it's not something that needs to be investigated. Um, I've seen, you know, a couple of cases where that horse throat was a symptom of something on a nerve that was affecting the muscles, you know, but it took a while for that to kind of manifest. So I hope that that's, that's getting taken care of. So, okay. How about the next one? Um, would love to hear about treating yeast-based ear infections. Dog is on raw food with no carbs. Okay. Um, so a lot of times, I think probably most of the people in the community would know, but not necessarily all, that when we have these chronic yeast infections in the ears, the dermatologists really do look for what is the allergy or sensitivity. So the fact that your dog's on a raw food, so it's off the kibble, off the starches, yet still getting them makes me wonder about the protein source and not being a dermatologist, but learning from them. That's maybe what I would think about. Is that it? Or an inhalant allergy, because that certainly can do it too. You know, it's spring and things are going. So it may be that, okay, certain times of the year, they're going to get these um, ear infections or if they swim, you know, the logical thing there. So, um, so I've always loved the old, you can tell I'm very old school, the white vinegar water cleaning, you know, half white vinegar, half warm water. And I know the dermatologists have a lot, a lot of newer products out there, but I've always just kind of been a vinegar water thing because I feel like it's very, very safe. And um, the thing about with, with oils and depending on the level of infection, like if it's really up and you're not worried about it going down deep, you're okay. But as a neurologist, I always, you know, would worry and work with my dermatology colleagues. Uh, one of them is, is she's one of the best ear people in the world, frankly. Um, and so knowing whether that eardrum is intact and, and worrying about stuff getting in there and then affecting the hearing nerve. So you really have to be very mindful of what goes down deep in there. So I've never really worried too much about vinegar and water. But if you know for sure that you're just working on the outer part and you're not letting everything drop way down in there and you add like a titch of lavender, something like that, it it should be fine. But just keep it keep it up. And then what I would do is talk to your veterinarian about, okay, or maybe seeing a dermatologist and seeing, do I need to change a protein source? Do I need to do something more for the inhalant allergies? There's something still that might be out of balance for those ears. Um, and maybe it's just keeping them um, with the vinegar water uh, type combination. But I would do some more and have, have somebody help you do some more investigative stuff there. So I hope that helps. Okay, next one. Uh, recommend a company for essential oils. Explain how you know the quality of what you're getting by reading the descriptions. Yeah, that's 
that can be tough. And there are many good companies out there for sure. Um, and what you want to do is, yes, look into, yeah, it's hard because because what you really want is to know, did they do gas chromatography? Did, you know, is it, are they really good things? And And a lot of them have good reputations and it's a matter of, you know, asking people, looking, talking to people who maybe have used the oils. Um, and there's, there's several good ones. Like I said, I, I was mentioning to somebody kind of on the side here, I, I cut my teeth on Young Living. That's, I know they're good. Now there are offshoots to that. And there's a whole, there's a whole soap opera drama around this. One of the offshoots is, is doTERRA. And, and we'll just, we'll just have some fun with it. But the doTERRA people said the Young Living, there was some stuff going on there they didn't like. And then the Young Living people said, well, no, doTERRA stole our formulas. And then there was a lawsuit um, that got all settled. And then Alexandra Bright, Alexandra Brighton, who was married to Gary Young, the founder of Young Living, she has her own oil brand um, and hers are very good. So you have that kind of whole dynamic. And there's also um, in Ohio here, Natural Options Aromatherapy, which are a local Ohio, and they're very good. And there's another one out of the West Coast called Swiss, Swiss Aromatics. I should remember this. Swiss Aromatics, something like that, that, that are really nice. So it is difficult without really kind of doing a deeper dive or asking people. Um, and, you know, if somebody's introducing you to another line, then then just say, OK, do you can you show me something that says, you know, how how they're formed? I tend to if it's something that's on the shelves of a grocery store, or even some of the fancy stores, I tend to stay away from. Now, if it's a little boutique in your area that has different oils, ask them. You know, talk to the to the owner of the boutique, the people who work there. Can you show me why you like them? What what is it about them that you like? Because we certainly want to support our small businesses and our boutiques. So so I hope that helps. And and truly, you know, I will tell people it what is resonating with you. You know, what though the ones I mentioned are all pure and there may be others. And if that feels good to you and you're getting good results then then you're okay just kind of avoid something that might be on a big box you know big chain store they might be okay to just diffuse around if you like a nice smell but for the medicinal properties of it or putting it on an animal or yourself um i kind of avoid those so okay how about the next one I do um, see something about any essential oil to avoid on dogs. And as I talked about, if it's pure and therapeutic, I have not had a problem with dogs. Um, and if it's, uh, we need to be mindful of cats. So that's definitely on my presentation of which oils are safe for cats. So um, the ones that I use and all the ones that I mentioned, I've never had a trouble, uh, any problems on dogs. So let's see what else we have. Um, okay. Oh. oh, oh, thank you. Somebody came up. The the one I uh, was talking about was Four Legger Organic Dog Shampoo. That's it. That's it. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. And there's a dermatologist friend that I have that had a line as well. I don't know if they're still out there. And we worked at the same specialty practice and the um, the shampoos were at the front desk on the other section. It was this huge practice. So I would kind of get tired and I'd sort of walk behind the scenes and sneak up to the front desk and just take a big whiff. And um, McIntyre, Gordon McIntyre, I think is the name. I don't know if they're still in, still making them, but those are wonderful, wonderful shampoos and great essential oils, dermatology. So those are two good names for you, Gordon McIntyre and Four-Legged Organic. Yay, thank you. Uh, I see I see a friend there. Thank you for showing up. Um, all right, let's see. Anybody else have some questions here? 
Yeah, some Hannah has mentioned that their dog's autoimmunity is highly sensitive. So yeah, we have to be mindful of that. You know, I've been working with oils for almost 30 years now, and um, I'm very smell sensitive. So even the most pure ones that you can get, I have to still be careful with. So just because of my own sensitivity. So I might put them on the bottom of my feet um, or lower on my wrists. But oftentimes if I get too close to my sinuses, I, I just get like a, um, a reaction. And that's, that's not the oil. The oils are very good. That's, that's me. So, oh, and here we go. The, the sore throat hasn't gone away. Severely infected teeth removed. They're still healing. Oh, hmm. I hoped I hope somebody looked in as they were intubating her, which means, you know, with the dental, they have to be under anesthesia. So you put the tube down there. So I would imagine your veterinarian looked really well in there, um, um, you know, to make sure that the tonsils looked OK, everything looked OK. Uh, so I just want to make sure that there is an infection in the tonsils, something swollen there. and. Um, following up with them so and is it yeah and how do you know like it's a sore throat like heavy swallowing or is it a change in the voice and so a change in the voice makes me more think vocal cords so having your veterinarian do a really 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 good exam and feeling all the lymph nodes here all around here and um, doing the best they can uh, looking in there and, and tracking those tonsils. So, um, but the, the um, CC product could potentially help that as well, you know, because you're getting all that anti-inflammatory. And yesterday we talked a lot about homeopathy. So that would be something that I would definitely add in because it's going to be safe. So the homeopathic pet products that are on the market would be really good. And since they're usually like a little liquid and you can put it a little bit in food or rub on the gums, um, in the water, what, wherever you have, whatever you have to do, but something that contains some Arnica would be very good um, to follow and very, very safe. And um, even, you know, we talked about hemp yesterday too. So even a very safe CBD or CBG cannabigerol or blend that will give us the anti-inflammatory piece of this to get the immune modulation and, um, and the little infrared, you know, whether the a laser type thing or the infrared patches, the LifeWay patches, those would be something to anything that's going to calm that inflammation, um, balance things, help with the, the pain and discomfort. So, but again, follow through with your vet. I really want to make sure all these nodes are okay and those tonsils are okay and that it's just a matter of reducing inflammation. Okay, good luck, Hannah. I hope, hope that goes well. And let's see. Can the human mirror their pets issue? <laughs> yeah, I love this. I love this. Yeah, busted, huh? Busted. Laura's got us. So uh, I, you know, that is such a great question. Can the human mirror the pet and the pet mirror the human? And maybe it is just this ultimate loop, but I would imagine that that's a possibility that Again, we can, I kind of talked about like it's two species walking this path in life, this this spiritual path, and and that we help each other. So why not? If we're connected on this energetic level, and they're mirroring us. What I would say is is interestingly, I'm reading this book right now that is is really cool, written by a Buddhist, and she takes. Buddhist principles and applies it to animal care. It, it's really wonderful. It's called animal wisdom. Um, but if you look up Buddhist animals, um, you, it's from Shambhala books and they do all the Buddhist things. But the interesting thing, I love Buddhism. I've been reading it for many, many years. And the interesting thing though is, you know, they have the reincarnation karma thing. And um, I always laugh at this because even in this book, and I've had Buddhist people say, it was like, well, maybe their animals are going to come back as a person. 
And I remember somebody said that their cat had passed. And was like, well, maybe next time we'll come back as a person. And I said, why? Why would they go lower? And it surprised them. So I look at animals as coming in as these really high spiritual beings that are, in the Buddhist term, it would be called a bodhisattva. And they come in to help this lower spiritual human being to evolve. So my thought is, yes, we can mirror them if their path maybe needs, they, you know, everybody, they all have their spiritual path as well. But I tend to think of them as, as spiritually up here. So they're, they're going to mirror us and go, okay, pay attention and do this versus us mirroring them. However, I can imagine that's possible. Great question and comment. Thanks, Laura. Okay, let's see what else we got. Yeah, somebody's asking about the slides for the essential oil talk. I think, I think there's a way to get the whole summit, and then the slides would would be in there, and the um, the dialogue, you know, the transcript, I believe. So hopefully, from somebody from Petson, but I think I think you just get the summit, and then you get all of it, and you get the transcripts and that type of thing. So I hope that that makes sense. Um, Laura says, love your answer. Thank you. Yeah, it just cracks me up. But I, I've had so many technicians that said, I want to, when I pass, I want to reincarnate as a Wagner cat. I'm like, yeah, they got it pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I had though I mentioned the outside boy that I took care of um, on yesterday's Q and A and, you know, he, oh, I could not, he, he taught me about control. Like he was independent and he, this was the way it was. And, you know, me trying to catch him was quite the ordeal. So finally realized this is who he is. But he we had like a glass back door and he would just show up and, you know, stand there. And we called it the drive through. And so if I was having a dinner party or something and and it, so, I'm you know, running around the kitchen and, and somebody would always go, uh, Sue, there's a cat staring in your back window, your back door. I'm like, OK. That's Gandhi. And I wanted because his life was so uncertain out in the wild. I made a pact that when he showed up, if he saw a human being, he was going to get his food. So I'm not sure how the people at the party. I'm like, OK, everybody's got to wait. I'm going to feed Gandhi and then you'll get your food. <laughs> so see, I earned my crazy cat lady props. All right, let's see what else we got here. Tried lavender on my pit bull, but she runs away whenever she sees me holding the bottle. Ah, she just likes to smell except food. Okay, any smell? Oh, bad. CBD helps, but like to have other relaxation options besides CBD. So right there, yeah, it shows us that even you might try a different brand of lavender. There are certainly different smells that go with it. Some are more what we would think of as the, you know, fragrant lavender. Others are different. So, so you might try a different one. They might also be too strong because, you know, animals are very sensitive smell wise. So maybe a different brand that you dilute with some um, good high quality vegetable oil and see how he likes that. Um, but other relaxation options would be you know, music therapy, um, homeopathy, things along those lines to see if if that would help. But that's interesting. Now, the other thing are flower essences. And I really didn't have a chance to talk too much about those, but flower essences are pretty much the energy of the plant. So they don't have a smell. Um, they They are just liquids and you can either rub them on their gums, you can put them in their food, you can rub them on the inside of the ear because we know, you know, there's a lot of capillaries there, so they absorb them. So the most popular everybody knows about Bach, you know, Rescue Remedy, that's a flower essence, and they have a whole line. There's another line that I love called Paralandra. And, but you have to go to Paralandra-LTD because there's a, some other Paralandra thing. Theirs are exceptional. 
and then the Flower Essence Society. There's a whole society um, that really educates about flower essences and you can get flower essences through them. And I've used all three of those lines and they're all very good. So that would be something to look into. And they have blends that are designed specifically for calming others for other types of healing. And um, yeah, flower essences are just a wonderful. And there's books out there you can get and, and you can learn more from the Flower Essence Society too. So try those. I, I'd love to know how that works. Okay, how about the next one? I'm gonna take some water here. Okay. Not seeing any just yet. So I I wish I'd had more time with the flower essence and I'm glad you asked that question to to remind me of it, there's also something called gemotherapy, G-E-M-M-O therapy. And it's a blend of like flower essences and the herbal parts of the plant. And it's in the young, um, the young parts, the sprouts type of the plants. And they're very powerful. And there is a book, um, I'm trying to remember the veterinarian's name, but it's gemotherapy for animals. And then there's other gemotherapy books that were written for humans. Um, but I love them as well. Um, some are really good, like black currant for inflammation. Some are good for calming. And again, they don't have a smell to them for those animals who are smell sensitive, but they really kick in the body's instinctive mechanisms for healing. And that's what all of these things do. That's why that's why many natural things can take longer um, because it's just getting things back into balance. Um, so we have to give them time. But that's another another thing to look into is gemotherapy. All right. Let's see any other comments or. If any of you are essential oil therapist and there's an oil that you love for a specific issue, um, please feel free to put it in the comments. So, um, you know, I, I stuck to some of the main ones, but if there's something that you really, really like, um, just just put it in the comments there because, boy, there are some good oils. I just learned about hyssop or hyssop and how good it is for viral things. Um, so probably a little strong for cats, but would be okay for dogs and certainly okay for us if we're starting to get a cold. Um, and that's the other thing that we really didn't talk about much with Carol Comator because we spent time about the energy work that she does. Um, however, she also does teaches you tuning forks and is probably the expert on animal essential oils, I think on the planet. And so I learned so much from her. So she's, she's a very good resource if you're interested in oils. Okay. Yeah. Hannah says, can I ask a follow-up question, please go right ahead. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I hope you'll look up um, Carol in terms of because she, she's just a wealth of knowledge on oils and whether it's for horses. And it's really cool to see a, a large animal, whether it's a cow or a horse or whatever, just relax into the essential oils. And, you know, horses can have a lot of respiratory stuff because they're in dusty barns. And there's just some wonderful blends. Usually they have some eucalyptus and things in them just to help open up those airways then can be really helpful. So Hannah says a cat's voice has changed. Um, the vet examined her throat under anesthesia, tonsils, throat were red. The vet recommended anti-inflammatories waiting to see if it resolve on its own. Yeah. So um, I'm glad. I, I, I figured your vet was going to be right on top of that and look deep down in there. So so yeah, let's get that inflammation under control, maybe add in the homeopathy, add in the loop, and then um, keep following up so that your vets can also keep feeling down here. Because if it's something that 
that is brewing that has affected the nerve to the vocal cords, um, that would affect the voice. And so we want to just keep on top of that. So, but you've got, you and your vet have got it covered, go down the anti-inflammatory path, um, but also keep, you know, keep massaging here. So you have a feel for what your cat's neck feels like. And then if you feel any lumps or anything, um, you can immediately get to your, your vet and then have your vet do some rechecks. So, but let's, you know, chronic inflammations can take a long time. You know, they really can. So let's just hope that you're on the right track. We get that inflammation down and that, um, that hurt that she'll come along and, and be okay. So, all righty. Let's see, any idea why a dog would be pawing at the mouth randomly throughout the day? He gets regular dentals and dentists said there are no problems with his mouth or teeth. Oh. I'm curious of what kind of breed. So it, I don't know if you could type that in um, and making sure that it's the mouth, not the ears, or not the side of the face. Um, Certainly from a nervous system standpoint, there are some um, nerves to the face that can create some weird tingly things. And, you know, um, he might be feeling that and just like, what the heck's that? Um, certainly cavaliers are the king and queens of doing this because of their skull formations and what happens to their nerves. And they have all these weird sensations. So they're always doing this. And the first thought is it's the ears, like an ear infection. And sometimes it is, but very often it's weird nerve sensations. So um, so if it's not the teeth, although, you know, they can't, they can't talk to us unless you talk to an animal communicator. So this would be the one that would be a perfect one for a really good communicator so that that intuitive can get a sense for is it teeth and you know on the surface everything looks okay but maybe there's something else going on or is it sinuses or is it the muzzle that's weird is it the ear so this would be one i know if it was my dog i'd be calling my my communicator friend jen and going what the heck tell me what's going on so so this is where you do need them to talk to you so but those those are the thoughts coming that other reasons to be pawing besides teeth, you know, muzzle, nerve sensation, ears, those kind of weird nerve sensations. So, and hopefully it's not a big problem. It just kind of is a weird tingly thing. Okay. How about another one? Oh yes. I remember talking about the widget kitty. Um, oh, urinates throughout the house. Pee pads taped throughout my house. Oh, good. I'm glad you never yell or punish him. Thank you for that. Thank you very much for that. So, so again, it's like, let's get down to those basics of, all right, do we, do we have some inflammation there from the stress? So we want to first start with working with the stress in the health household and environmental enrichment. So, you know, things like cat grass, things like uplifting music, um, being able to look outside, um, anything, even bringing grass in that he can lay on, playing, all of those things. And then, you know, like we talked about for the anxiety, whether it's music, um, hemp, CBD type products, homeopathy for calming, anything like that that that's going to get that nervous system calmed down. And then if your veterinarian thinks that part of the urinating is that the stress has gotten so bad that there's inflammation. So if you ever see blood in the urine, you know, with the pee pad, luckily you'd be able to see the blood and that's where adding in anti-inflammatory homeopathy, the loops, things like that could be very, very, very helpful. Um, and then, yeah, working with a communicator and energy practitioner here. So as I mentioned yesterday with Carol Comitores, you know, there's there's techniques to get rid of trauma, that type of thing, like we talked about. So it's all about getting to that underlying root of what the what the trauma is and just gently and slowly. And and thank you for putting the pee pads everywhere and not just yelling. Um, that's. 
that's fantastic. So, so just keep getting to the root and then also looking at, you know, how I love my metaphors. So who's peeing on you? Who, who's, where is it uh, a trauma that, that you need to, to kind of look at or, or I invite you to look at as, as, you know, for yourself. So a lot of the stuff we had today and yesterday, like Dr. Civil is breathing and Nick's sound. I would think as you really start calming your nervous system and that's going to help your kitty, um, but keep, keep going with that. And then potentially, you know, a communicator I think would be really helpful because a lot of times a great communicator can t key in, you know, I had a case once where, um, as an energy practitioner, I like to go to the house, especially with cats. And so this cat was very stressed and would hide. And so as, as I was there, I was listening, you know, and I talk about this in the sound classes and the through a dog's ear work is to pay attention to the sounds. And this cat lived in a house that was in it, like a new development. So there was like, beeps and construction and stuff like that the humans had just gotten you know they they weren't paying attention to anymore but those kind of things were stressful for the cat so whether it's white noise or music or things like that just watch what other things might be going on in the environment um, and are there animals outside that are that are upsetting him so so keep getting going deeper and deeper and deeper but I think yeah, if you can get a good communicator to to work, then I think that would be really helpful too. So good luck, Laura. Good luck. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Yes. Yeah, so I there I see a quick question: Who do I use for animal communication? And and I always invite people on the Facebook group. If you are a communicator and you do work with people, please put your your information on the Facebook group um, because I'm sure there's just some wonderful people out there. And I use Jen Ortman, um, Holista Pet, but if you just Google Jen Ortman and Joan Ranquette, R-A-N-Q-U-E-T Ranquette, she is well renowned, exceptional. And um, again, I know there's others out there whose names I don't know. Um, and and also, if you're not a communicator, but you have used one and you really valued um, them, please share that with everybody in the Facebook page because they can they're just uh, worth their weight and triple platinum as far as I'm concerned. Um, they're just they've helped. Jen has helped me so much. I can't even begin to tell you. So, um, uh, Laura says he jumped up in his in her lap. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. We're going to get through this. Going to get through this, buddy. Yeah. And again, you know, as we talked about that energy from that heart center um, and we're connected to this big energy field. And so as we sit quietly, as we do those deep breathing exercises that we've learned over the last three days and we open up to that, that really wonderful big quantum field and ask, you know, that's one of my favorite things. Ask. So what people are like, well, you're crazy. Who are you asking? There's nobody around. I'm asking this big field and I'm asking the kitty's higher essence. You know, we have this kind of essence here and then a higher connection. So I'm asking the higher essence, what does my cat need to help with that trauma, to help to be calm and in balance? And whether he pees on the pads or doesn't pee on the pad, my intention is for that highest good and calming and him to be happy. And what do I need? And you would be surprised. Like we talked about, you, you ask and you put it out there and all of a sudden somebody gives you a book or you see something on the Facebook page or well, there you have it. It's right there. So always open up that heart. It's like being on a cell phone, you know, but you've got five bars instead of two. So when we do it through this heart connection, you've got the best connection and you're getting right to the wisdom that you need. Um, so, so everybody practice that. Okay. Let's see. We got another one coming up here. 
Oh, I love this. If our pets are so intuitive to healing, why do we need to offer energy healing to them like Reiki? Why can't they use the energy to heal themselves? This is a question that I have asked myself for a long, long time, because I would agree they are very intuitive. They're high spiritual beings. They are self healers. You know, I've made this joke many times. We learned in vet school, if a cat breaks a leg, just make sure the two parts are in the same room and they're going to heal. And yet I do see and have learned from my teachers, my mentors, how helpful it is. And I think it is because like us, they are swimming around in this world of um, potentially difficult energies. They're helping us on our paths, which can um, entrain difficult energies. So in the best, highest world where everything is peachy and that connection that those five bars are right there and they're totally connected, they don't need us. Um, and a lot of times they aren't in that space. So it is helpful to channel that energy through. Here's the other answer to that is what I had mentioned before and something that Carol had taught me when we're doing energy medicine and we're connecting to that bigger quantum field, what's happening. And Reiki is certainly like this, right? Because it's an attunement. And, and so it's coming through who's getting it first. So many times the animal will come into our lives and, oh, yes, the animal needs energy work. Mm -hmm. Who needs the energy work? So um, it's just a matter of a number of different scenarios. But but that is, yeah, I love that you asked that because that's something that as I, especially as I was learning, why do they even need it? They're just so amazing. But they're all swimming in some of these difficult energies just like we are so okay all right any other questions Let's see here and as always i just want to thank everybody for just being such wonderful pet guardians and for joining in on the facebook page and for watching the summit and i hope that you've gotten a lot out of it that was our intention for us to honor you as as wonderful pet parents and and give you something that that can help you and your pet um oh i see someone here yeah you know, a, a kind of a follow-up to that what's the difference between reiki and other energy healing techniques and um that is a really really good question and you know the thing the wonderful thing about energy and different techniques is that it all eventually kind of channels through according to what resonates with you. I keep saying that and there's no pun intended what resonates to you. So as you learn different modalities, some may be more um, technique based. You know, Reiki has certain hand symbols that the energy sort of embedded in that healing touch for animals I love and it's it's I like to tell people to start there a lot because there are techniques and um, it helps our left brain know that I'm doing something. Same with Dr. Edwards' work because it's very body oriented. And then there are other techniques where you literally got to get out of the way um, and just allow your, your connecting to certain frequencies. Reconnective healing is one that I'm thinking of, which is really wonderful. And you're connecting to these certain frequencies and they're coming through. And the idea is like, get the heck out of the way. So they're all wonderful and they all do amazing things. It's really just, here we go again. It's what resonates with you so that because if we are really in tune with it, here's another pun. If we're really in tune with it, it's really resonating and we're feeling it, then we are like the five bars. We become the 5G. We're channeling it through and it's coming through pure, uh, more powerfully and versus like, well, you know, I. I, I learned this technique. It's great. And I'm going to do that because I feel like I should do that. 
I think it gets diluted because our frequency isn't as open. So it's just different techniques. And I remember um, learning that Janet Menken, who was the nurse who started Healing Touch for humans, and she would tell her, her students, you know, okay, this is what I've brought forth. Now you take it. What are, what are you going to do with it? And that's the cool thing. You'll see so many different techniques now, different um, sort of brands. And what's happened is that practitioners learned one or two or three things. And then intuitively, they like, oh, I think I'm going to do this or I'm going to do this. Kind of like what Nick was mentioning today, how he melds energy because he's a yoga master. He has the breathing and the yoga stuff and the, and the energy that he's learned and then the sound and then then he blends it to make his own type of healing and you see that a lot and it's very exciting so again as you read about these or experiencing a webinar or something and if it really piques your interest that's what you follow so um lots of good stuff out there have fun with it have fun and somebody said, can anybody learn how to do Reiki? Anybody can. We are intuitive, energetic beings. That's who we are. And anybody can learn this. Now, some people, it comes to easier because they're more open to it. But I've seen people who aren't necessarily open to it, receive it and, and get a lot of good healing and learn it. And I remember when I first started, I couldn't feel a thing. And, and poor Carol Commodore, I was just whining. I'm like, I don't feel anything. And she had us do this exercise where we would walk up, um, it was up with other people. And you would stop when you felt the energy field of that person. Remember I talked about pebbles in the pond. So when you stop, when you feel the edge of the pond, I couldn't feel anything. And I walk up and I'd stop and I just start whining. And she's, she said, Sue, you know, you're stopping at the edge of that person's field. I didn't feel it, but instinctively my body knew to stop there. So anybody can do this. The idea is to have fun with it. Get out of the way. Don't, we don't want to tell ourselves, I can't do this. I can't feel it. Yeah, let all that go. And yes, anybody can learn to do this. And it's, it's really, really fun. Really fun. Okay, let's see. Any other questions here? Yes. And Hannah mentions that animals are more evolved. They live in alignment with their environment. Yeah, we can learn so much from nature, can't we? And that that book I was reading um, had just an amazing quote in it. And, you know, I have my notebook. I read these things and I write stuff down so that I can go back and kind of review it. And it talked about, this concept, it might have been that one or no, it was a different book called Radical Regeneration by Andrew Harvey and Carolyn Baker, which is a summary of three or four books that they put together. And in their part about animals and their nature, I think it was there where they talked about, you know, animals don't have genocide. They don't have premeditated violence. So it was in one of those two books. And and I thought that's exactly true, you know, so who's the more evolved? Um, and that's, and we humans are getting there. Sometimes we look around right now, it doesn't feel like that. Um, and I always say cat is, life is like a cat abscess. It's a perfect metaphor. And any vet would say, you know, you're right, because that wound happens. Now you can't find it. The bite happens. One cat bites another, injects some bacteria in there, but the it's so small that you don't see it, but it's festering. It's under the surface and it's festering and it's festering. And then it's hot, but you still, it's like, where is it? And then it starts puffing up. And eventually it has to rupture in order to heal. And I feel like that's, humanity does these. We go through phases where it is rupturing and the pus is flowing and it's just not pretty. Yet underneath it, what is there? It's something called granulation tissue, this pink, beautiful, healthy tissue. So cat abscesses heal from the inside out. And there is enough good in humanity right now. You know, any of us that when we open our hearts and we send good thoughts to anybody and everybody, you're helping to form that granulation tissue. So no matter how bad the pus is flowing, 
we can stay in connection and in that place where we're sending those good energies and good thoughts, you're helping to form that granulation tissue. And so I think that humanity will evolve and survive. Some days it looks tougher than others, but I am very hopeful that that's what's going to happen. And we just need to pretend we're animals. So, and I hope that um, if you didn't get a chance to open the free gift, that's what that's all about. It really is. It's it's these animal metaphors and what they teach us. So I would encourage you to to open that and enjoy them. They're little just vignettes and and there's so much wisdom that animals teach us. We just have to kind of look at it. So, so definitely enjoy that for sure. Um, there's so many wonderful things. Okay. It looks like it's seven again. Thank you so much. And, um, all of you for your questions, your comments, for being part of the summit. And if, if the post summit resonates with you, great. If not fine. And, you know, please follow the, the speakers, find what resonates with you. And, and if you find other folks out there that are doing great work, um, once again, the wonderful part about being part of the Pet Summit's Facebook group is that we can share that. So please let us know what you're finding as you're going through your journey of life. So um, wonderful, everybody. Thank you. And thank you for being here. Take care.